This morning we've come to worship, we've come to praise God because it is uh, Christmas. Just in case it had bypassed you, um, it's Christmas. And now I feel that instead of it being September when we start Christmas celebrations, we can actually do it for real. So I'm going to read a portion from uh, Luke uh, as our call to worship this morning. Suddenly, a great company of the heavenly host appeared with the angel, praising God and saying, Glory to God in the highest, and on earth peace to men on whom his favour rests. When the angels had left them and gone into heaven, the shepherds said one to another, Let's go to Bethlehem and see this thing that has happened, which the Lord has told us about. We can't physically go to Bethlehem, to that scene, but we can offer our praises right here, right now. And that's what we're going to do uh, as we uh, pray together and then sing together. Let's pray. Lord, we sing our carols, we bring our prayers as we prepare to celebrate your birth. We've come today on the eve of Christmas to praise you for loving us enough to be born into our world just to make us new people, your new people. Help us to remember that you came to change the world and forgive us when we don't always consider this. Change our hearts and minds this Christmas, Lord, to appreciate your meekness and your majesty, because we ask it in your name. Let's stand to sing, if we're able, name of all majesty.
Our reading is from Romans chapter 1, the first six verses. Romans chapter 1. Paul, a servant of Christ Jesus, called to be an apostle and set apart for the gospel of God. The gospel he promised beforehand through his prophets in the Holy Scriptures regarding his son, who was, as to his earthly life, a descendant of David, and who, through the spirit of holiness, was appointed the Son of God, in power by his resurrection from the dead. Jesus Christ, our Lord, through him we received grace and apostleship to call all the Gentiles to the obedience that comes from faith for his name's sake. And you also are among those Gentiles who are called to belong to Jesus Christ. Our second carol, Once in Royal David City, let's stand to sing. to look at all the carols um, there's so many and we get maybe what four weeks to sort of think we can uh, sing uh, them together and and inevitably somebody will say well you didn't sing my favorite you know this year so I'm sorry if that's the case but I have tried with the carols this morning to uh, pick up the ones that uh, well I haven't sung this year maybe I missed a one I don't know so the next, our next carol um, that's sort of eventually going to lead us into some prayer time, it came upon a midnight clear. Let's stand again to sing.
Those words remind us, don't we, that uh, even though it's Christmas time, it's not all well with everybody for all sorts of reasons. We know that in our own fellowship, we know it in our community, and further worldwide as well. So our prayers uh, reflect uh, our thoughts this morning. Let's pray together. Lord, we thank you that you have shown us in Jesus that you aren't remote or far off. And although we can't see or touch you, you've promised to always be with us. So as we remember the coming of Jesus, help us to know too the joy of your presence in our lives. We do thank you for the manger scene, and we know it's so much more than just a story. It's a record of all you've done to open our eyes and our hearts to your wondrous power. As we rejoice, we are mindful, Lord, of those whose lives are fractured and broken by war and horror and fighting. Particularly in our minds are Ukraine, Gaza and Palestine, and other Far Eastern countries. Lord, we don't really know what to pray for other than we pray that you would bring peace. Only you can do that. We know that there are many, hundreds, maybe thousands, suffering under this kind of regime. And we just ask, Lord, that you would be with them. We pray, Lord, for families torn apart by violence and grief. And we ask, Lord, that you would bring comfort to them. We remember those, Lord, like you, who didn't have anywhere or don't have anywhere to leave their heads, to rest their heads. We pray for those, Lord, who for Christmas, it won't be any different. The day will be spent cold and hungry, without shelter. We pray, Lord, that you would be with those people that need you, and maybe through the kindness of others, they will get adequate food and sustenance at this time. Lord, we pray for those who are suffering physically and we know that there are few who will remember later um, from our fellowship. Strengthen and heal, Lord. And particularly, Lord, I ask a blessing for those who will spend Christmas in hospital. I just ask that patients and staff alike might feel your presence. So, Lord, we want to pray your prayer now, Lord together. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those that trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power and the glory, for ever and ever. Amen. When I'm choosing a carol, well, any hymn, I always go for the words first. If there's a good tune, that's a bonus. And uh, two people for me who uh, seem to get the tune and the words pretty much on cue, on cue are Matt Papa and Matt Boswell and uh, we're going to have a time of reflection as we listen to uh, a newish hymn for me anyway uh, this year and it's Come Adore the Humble King. Before his majesty. 
majesty Hail the little Savior Hope what hope no tongue could tell God has come with us to dwell His name is Emmanuel Oh, praise the humble King Come adore in humble state He the song It's lovely to be together and we've got visitors and that's even lovelier. Not that I don't like to see the uh, familiar faces, I do, uh, but uh, new faces are always lovely. Some things just belong together, don't they? Like jelly and custard and uh, ant and deck and pork and crackling, Ian's favourite. Um, black and white, faith, hope and love. Irene and Smarties, <laughs> and very soon turkey and stuffing. Most of us, if we're honest, like to be part and feel part of something. Um, it's maybe difficult to, to, to describe. Um, it might be a set of people uh, with whom we share a common interest, uh, or it might be people that we feel comfortable spending time with, that we enjoy uh, their company, a sense of somebody or some place that gives us a sense of security, somewhere where we can relax and uh, feel just ourselves and, and, and be uh, our own person. Throughout our lives, we've all belonged to uh, things, associations. We've all 
had sets of, of things that we belonged to in our working lives. We have belonged to a firm, a group, a school, a, a society, whatever. Or we have joined a club that we have belonged to, maybe to get fit or to uh, lose weight or to learn how to arrange flowers or to take better photographs, whatever that is. We've no doubt found, being part of that group, that over a period of time there's been a bonding of friendship and fellowship together because we share things. That pretty much describes the church, I'm sure you're thinking, a body of people who share a common interest and enjoy each other's company. Or is that stretching it a bit? I don't know. Um, but with church, there is a subtle difference. Because although there's no joining fee or financial commitment and the membership doesn't run out, there is a commitment of a different kind. There's a responsibility both to each other and to God as we serve him using the gifts that he's given us. 1 Peter 2 says, um, but you are a chosen people, you know the verse, a royal priesthood a holy nation, a people belonging to God, that may, you may declare the praises of him who called you out of darkness into his wonderful light. Faith in Jesus makes us that privileged people, and what an honour it is when you think about it. I've tried to sort of suggest already the difference between the humanity of God and the majesty of God we can't always get our head around, but he was willing to become that man to be for, our, for us, really. Um, there's nobody more important than anybody else here. We're all on the same level ground. And just as I say, it takes a bit of understanding that God came to earth as he did as a baby. It also takes a bit of getting your head around that being the kind of human beings that we are, engulfed in sin, God chose us, you and me, to be part of his royal family and belonging to him. Wow, that kind of blows my mind a bit. And it all starts here in the Bethlehem stable. I love those words of people belonging to God, called out of darkness into wonderful light. Not just called out of darkness into light, into wonderful light and into his wonderful light. We've been thinking about Advent as a time of waiting and anticipation and reflection, waiting for Jesus, the light of the world, to dispel all that darkness. Belonging isn't just a warm, snuggly feeling. It's not even the right hand of fellowship. It's the secure knowledge that we're not on our own but we're part of a much bigger thing. It's about faith. It's about trust. Belonging's about security. It's protection. It's fellowship. Together. It's love. Shared in a variety of ways. It's a well thought through plan because God created it. Belonging is this. It begins with openness. The willingness to come alongside someone else. To pour out, care, invest. It's about sharing the journey, doing life together, growing, forging, becoming. It's about selflessness, caring enough to walk through the valley, even when it's painful, to love people as Christ has loved us. It's rejoicing when they rejoice, hurting when they hurt, 
being a hand, an encourager, a friend. We were not created to wander alone. For as iron sharpens iron, so one person sharpens another. That's what it's about. I love the words used there, forging, investing, sharpening. It's what we do. Hopefully, sometimes we do it without even thinking about it. Purifying metals is a picture that uh, scripture paints more than once, and uh, it's, it's a good one. The first six verses of our reading from Romans 1 summarizes very nicely the uh, nativity. Verses 1 and 2 say the gospel promised beforehand through his prophets. Every carol service we read from Isaiah chapter 9, those words of prophecy that there's going to be unto us a boy is born. Verse 3 regards our human nature, talks about that, because being a descendant of David, we know that uh, Joseph and Mary had to make that treacherous journey from Nazareth to Bethlehem so they could register because they belonged to the house of David. They had to travel. It also goes on in those verses in Romans to mention Jesus' power and his resurrection and how because of his sacrifice we receive undeserved forgiving grace. And so verse 6 reminds us that we are among those belonging to Jesus Christ. I must admit sometimes when um, at, at Christmas time I don't always look at that big picture that God's painted. I just look at the manger scene and kind of don't get any further than that. And that's, that's okay. But I do believe that everything happens for a purpose in our lives. And this was no random birth, as we know. There were consequences, and there were big ones at that. God fulfilled his responsibility because he said he would send Jesus to the earth, his only son, and he did that. So obviously we have a responsibility as well. And some of it, I think, is to understand, believe, and accept something that Galatians 5, 24 says, those who belong to Christ ditch the sinful natures with all its passions and desires. So we turn our lives around because we don't want what we had we want something more. Do you know, I've listened in the car radio this week to so much comment regarding the two teenagers responsible for stabbing to death another young girl. And one comment that was made said, there are no bad kids, there are just bad parents. That's not true at all. There's none of us got any natural good in us because we all fall short, we read in scripture, of God's mark, the mark that God requi requires of us. We have to be responsible. And belonging to Jesus changes all of that because we come, as we've said, out of the darkness into the light. And the benefits are plentiful. There are many, and we experience them daily. <coughs> Romans 12, verse 5 says, So in Christ, we who are many form one body, and each member belongs to all the others. So I'm sorry, you're saddled with me, and I'm saddled with you, but that's the way it is. We're told we belong so that we can declare our praises, and that's what we've been doing today, remembering, especially at this time. Just like the shepherds and the wise men, we can add our personal praise to the baby born as the saviour of the world. I'll tell you some other good news as well regarding belonging. Revelation chapter 7 verse 10 says, Salvation belongs to our God who sits on the throne and to the Lamb. Nothing to do with us. It belongs to God. We belong to him. There's a bit of a, a, an ongoing thing going here, I hope. So 
do we just believe that at Christmas or at this time of the year, um, you know, it, it, do we just believe it now? Or do we have a faith that takes us all year round, every day of our lives, that will take us as God's family wherever he leads us? We don't always know where that is. But faithfully, as we go into 2024, I think together we stand a lot better chance of coping with whatever is thrown at us, and sometimes it's a lot, and I know for some people 2023 has been a bit of a year. Well, together, belonging to God, belonging to each other, we can faithfully go into 2024 knowing that he is with us and knowing that he won't ever let us down. We're going to sing our final carol and it's the first Noel and we'll stand to sing. Consider your coming to earth, Lord. May we feel in our hearts that this is just the beginning. So may the obedience of Joseph and Mary and the shepherds be ours. May the wisdom of the Magi inhabit our hearts and minds. And may the love of God inspire us today and always. Amen. Amen.